the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening, beloved. You are welcome once again to another time in the presence of the Lord. I pray that as you have come to join us tonight, the Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus. And your life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. You will not have a plastic experience in our Bible study tonight in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. King of glory, we exalt your name. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your power. Thank you for keeping us in perfect peace. Thank you for not allowing the enemies to rejoice over us. Thank you for making us more than a conqueror. Thank you for being with us, O Lord. Father, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, your word says that where two or three are gathered in your name, there you will be in their midst. Father, it is also written that for the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that as we gather tonight, O oh Lord, Father, let your presence overshadow us in the name of Jesus. Father, release your fire, release your power upon us afresh in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us begin to thank the Lord once again. Let us begin to appreciate the Lord. Let us thank Him. I want us to think very deep of the goodness of the Lord over your life, over your family. I want you to thank the Lord, appreciate Him. Open your heart, open your mouth, and begin to thank the Lord. Thank Him for His mercy. Thank Him. The Bible says it is by the mercy of the Lord that we are not consumed. Let us appreciate the Lord. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Thank the Lord. The Bible says, the psalmist says, that bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, beloved. Appreciate Him. Thank Him for His faithfulness. Thank Him for His loving kindness. Thank Him for His tender mercy. Thank Him for the provisions in all dimension. Appreciate the Lord. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Father, we thank You. Jesus, we thank You. Thank You, Savior. Thank You, our Redeemer. Thank You, our friend. Thank You, our God. Blessed be Thy name, O Lord, who is like unto Thee, O Lord, in all the earth who can be compared to Thee, O Lord. Thank You, Jesus. Blessed be Thy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to close our eyes and I want us to pray like this. Say, O oh Lord, my Father, have mercy upon me this hour and answer my humble cry in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh God, my Father, have mercy upon me in the name of Jesus and answer my humble cry in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh God, my Father, have mercy upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, have mercy upon me and answer my humble cry in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say, my Father, say, my Father. Let the blood of Jesus avail for me tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, my Father, let your blood, O oh Lord, avail for me tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your blood, O oh Lord, avail for me tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say, blood of Jesus, arise and silence every demonic accusation against my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, arise and silent every demonic accusation against my life in the mighty name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, arise and silent every demonic accusation against my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, arise and silent. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say, blood of Jesus, arise, rend the heavens open over our study tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, arise, rend the heavens open over our study tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, over our Bible study tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, arise, rend the heavens open. In the mighty name of Jesus, rend the heavens open, rend the heavens open, rend the heavens open, rend the heavens open. Oh, yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, arise, rend the heavens open over our study tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, arise, rend the heavens open. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. 
there. Say, oh God, arise. Let your enemies assign against us tonight. Be scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise. Let your enemies assign against us, oh Lord. Be scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise. Let your enemies assign against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Be scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise. Let your enemies assign against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Be scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise. Let your enemies assign against us, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be scatter now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say, oh. Say, blessed Holy Spirit, have your way to now. In the mighty name of Jesus, blessed Holy Spirit, have your way to now. Come into our midst to now. In the mighty name of Jesus, blessed Holy Spirit, have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, blessed Holy Spirit, have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, blessed Holy Spirit, have your way. In our study tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of the living God, have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way tonight. Have your way tonight. Have your way tonight. Way tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. Say, pray this say, fresh fire of God fall upon my prayer altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Fresh fire of God, fall upon my prayer altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Fresh fire of God in the mighty name of Jesus, fall upon my prayer altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Fresh fire of God in the name of Jesus, fall upon my prayer altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Fresh fire of God in the name of Jesus, fall upon my prayer altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Fresh fire of God, fall upon my prayer altar in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray amen thank you Jesus say every evil finger pointed say every evil finger pointing <coughs> say every evil finger pointing at my spiritual and physical progress with that in the mighty name of Jesus, every evil finger pointing at my spiritual and physical progress. With that, in the mighty name of Jesus, every evil finger pointing pointing towards my physical and spiritual progress. With that, in the mighty name of Jesus, with that, in the mighty name of Jesus, with that, with that, with that, with that, with that, with that. Oh yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Say, oh God, arise. Break down every idol in my heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise. Break down every idol in my heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise. Break down every idol in my heart. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise. Break down every idol in my heart. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I want us to pray the next one like this. Say, every plan of the wicked against my life be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. Every plan of the wicked against my life be scattered in the name of Jesus. Every plan of the wicked against my life be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. Every plan of the wicked against my life be scattered, be scattered, be scattered. Be scatter, be scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say, Oh God, arise. Strengthen me by your might. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise, strengthen me by your might. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise, strengthen me by your might. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say, Any power. Unseen for my soul, you are a liar. Die in the mighty name of Jesus. Any wicked power, unseen for my soul, you are a liar. Da, 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 da. In the mighty name of Jesus, any wicked power, unseen for my soul, you are a liar. Da, in the mighty name of Jesus. Da, 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 da. Oh, yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Say, oh Lord, my father. 
Say, oh Lord, my father, break me and remove me. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, my father, break me and remove me. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, my father, break me and remove me. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, my father, break me and remove me. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, my father, break me and remove me. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, my father, break me and remove me. 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 Oh yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Say, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, my salvation in Christ shall not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say, O oh God, my Father. Arise and make me a mysterious wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father, arise and make me a mysterious wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father, arise and make me a mysterious wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father, arise and make me a mysterious wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father, arise and make me a mysterious wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and make me. A mysterious wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and make me a mysterious wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's time for the praise and worship. God bless you, beloved.
the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. I welcome you to this evening Bible study. And the Lord who is the teacher, who is the master, who is the rabbi, will teach us in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Lord will give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to appreciate God for this time, for another time to learn at his feet. Thank him because the Lord is going to furnish you with divine information that will bless your life. Because the entrance of the word of God into your life will give you light and will give you understanding. I want you to thank him because tonight the word of God is going to destroy every ignorance in your life. I want you to appreciate him because the word of, of the law will be a bullet that will destroy every challenge, every problem, every concern in your life and your family in the name of Jesus. I want you to start to appreciate him, give him praise, give him praise for what the Lord has planned to do this evening with this teaching. Appreciate him for the blessing you are going to receive through this teaching. Appreciate him for the opening of eyes that you are going to receive this evening. Appreciate it because the Lord is going to reveal the secret of your enemy, the secret of the power that is behind any challenge in your life. Because this evening teaching of the Lord will we, we, uh, be directed and we attack every challenge, every issue that are not favorable in your life. Give him praise for the wonderful thing that the Lord is going to use this evening Bible study to do in your life. Appreciate him. Give him praise. Lord, we just want to thank you. We give you praise because your word is light. And wherever your word is spoken, then light illuminates the environment. We thank you because of the light of your word, which is going to illuminate our lives this evening. Lord, be thou exalted, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. I want you to pray like this. Say, O God, my Father. Let the entrance of your word into my life this evening. Destroy every spiritual ignorance in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my Father, let the entrance of your word into my life this evening. Let it destroy every spiritual ignorance in my life in the name of Jesus. Let it destroy every spiritual ignorance in my life in the name of prayer. That prayer very well. Let the entrance of the word of God into your life tonight. Let it destroy every spiritual ignorance in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want you to pray the next one. And I want you to pray like this. Say, light in the word of God. Illuminate any darkness in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Light in the word of God. Illuminate any darkness in my life. In the mighty name of your prayer, prayer very well. Light in the word of God. Illuminate every darkness in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Light in the word of God. Illuminate every darkness in my family, in my job, in my destiny, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Pray the next one like this. Say, by the word of God of this evening, O Lord my Father, let the entire let my entire family receive divine illumination in the mighty name of Jesus. By the word, by your word this evening, O Lord, let my entire family receive divine illumination in the mighty name of Jesus. By your word this evening, by your teaching, by the entrance of your word into my life this evening, let my entire family receive divine illumination in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are pray. Amen. I also pray the next one like this. Say, any power from anywhere on assignment to distract me as I listen to the word of God this evening. You are a liar. Get away from me in the mighty name of Jesus. Any power from anywhere on assignment to distract me. You are a liar. Get away from me now. Get away from me now. Any power from anywhere on assignment to distract me as I listen to the word of God. As I learn at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ this evening. You are a liar. Get away from me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I still want you to pray another prayer. I say, Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is the one that gives understanding of the Word of God. So I want to pray like this. Spirit of God that gives understanding of the, of the Word of God. Come into my life in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, you are the one that gives understanding of the Word of God. Come into me now. Come into me now. Come into me now because I want to understand everything. I want to understand every of your teaching. I want to understand every of your, of your word this evening. Spirit of the living God that gives understanding of the word of God. My life is available. Enter me now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for another opportunity to learn at your faith. Oh, Lord, Father, teach us this evening yourself in the name of Jesus. It is a voice that we want to hear. We don't want to hear the voice of any other person. We don't, we don't want to hear the voice of man. We want to hear your word, your voice. Oh, Lord, speak to us yourself in the name of Jesus. We want to see you. We don't want to see man. Oh, Lord, open our eyes to see you in the mighty name of Jesus. And open our heart of understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus Precious name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. I want you to sing this song. Open my eyes, O Lord. Open my eyes, O Lord. Open my eyes, O Lord. I am ready to see you. Open my eyes, open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, open my eyes, O oh Lord. I am ready to see you. Open my eyes, open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord, I am ready to see you. Open my heart, open my heart, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my heart, O oh Lord, I am ready to obey. Open my heart, open my heart, O oh Lord. Open my heart, O oh Lord. Open my heart, O oh Lord. I am ready to I pray for you this evening. As the Lord teaches you, the Lord will open your eyes to see him and to behold him in the name of Jesus. As you open your heart this evening to learn at his faith, the Lord Almighty will give you the grace to obey every of his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, 
we have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Uh, we want to continue with our series of We Wrestle. The series of We Wrestle. So this is We Wrestle. We Wrestle Part 3. We Wrestle Part 3. And um, the, the title of the lecture of today is Meekness. Meekness, which is Lecture 10. Lecture 10. Meekness. Meekness. Lecture 10. Meekness. Meekness. I pray that the Lord Almighty will endow us with the spirit of meekness in the mighty name of Jesus. Meekness is important. It, uh, it, uh, what reveal, what, what reveal, what shows the difference between children of God and those that are not children of God. Meekness is vital in the life of any child of God. It, it shows who you are. It shows, it shows that you are, um, a believer. It shows that you, you are a follower of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was, was meekness, meekness personified. So it, it's, uh, it is a replica of your father, Jesus Christ, when you have meekness. So this is one of the fruit of the spirit, which is expected in the life of a child of God, in the life of whosoever that is professing Jesus Christ and in the life of whosoever that, conf that has confessed that he or she is saved. Meekness is vital and uh, it is something that people see in you. It, it is, it is, it is something that is uh, it, uh, that is being displayed, not that you 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 are, are displaying it for people to see, but it emanates from you. You see, naturally, as a result of as a result of change that has been brought to your life, as a result of the Spirit of God that is dwelling in you, as a result of the the identity which you share with Jesus Christ. That is the meekness. It's, it's easy for you to be to meek. You are naturally meek because the Spirit of God has already restructured you, and the Spirit of God has re reconstructed you. The Spirit of God has remolded you. He has changed you uh, from who you were before you met Jesus Christ. That is the Spirit of God. And the example you can see the example of this in Paul the Apostle who was antagonizing the disciple before, who was so proud in all he knew, in his law book, in the, in his, the, 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 the uh, knowledge of the constitution, in, 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 in all this, he, he took pride in them before he met Christ. But immediately he met Christ on his way to Damascus, things changed. People couldn't believe it. In fact, people that knew Paul before were said, are you sure this this is still the 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 the, the soul that, that we knew because his change his life changed so this is what what uh, a, a meeting christ can do in one's life meekness is one of those things that shows that you have become a changed person that that shows that you have you have met jesus christ that shows that you have come across something that is unique something that is supernatural than what is available in this world. Remember, remember the case in the scripture when people look at, Jesus, at, at the disciple of Jesus Christ and they look at them and they could, they could not hold it. They say, mm, this one must have been with Jesus Christ. Because when they look at them, they saw everything about Jesus Christ in them. They saw that meekness of Jesus Christ in them and say, oh, this one must have been with Jesus Christ. And you also remember in Antioch, they look at the disciple very, very carefully and they say, what? This one are just like Jesus Christ, and this Jesus, this one are little, little Christ, meaning they are Christian. They behave like, like Christ, they walk like Christ, they talk like Christ, they take things like Christ, they forgive like Christ, they overlook things like Christ, they move on like Christ, they relate like Christ. There have been a reconstruction, spiritual reconstruction, spiritual re, 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 reproduction of an individual. That is what is that is the meekness is an evidence of that. And I pray for you that tonight, as, this, as the word of God comes to you, as the word of God comes to you, the Lord will remove your life 
and we give you the grace to exhibit the meekness of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So this, this evening, we shall, <clears throat> we shall be looking at the memory verse and uh, we shall be looking at um, the text for the lecture and we shall be looking at the scriptures. There are various scriptures which are going to read together. This is Bible study. So you, you've got to get your Bible so that we can read together. Then we're going to look at the introduction to this particular lecture 10, which is meekness. And we're going to look at what is meekness. What is meekness? If time permits us, this evening we're going to look at characteristics of, of the meek. But if the time does not permit us, we will stop today at what is meekness. And next week, by God's grace, when we are going to conclude this, then we do other ones. Praise the Lord. And I pray that your, your, your coming online to this Bible study this evening will not be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord, will, you, you will have the whole package of the blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want you to be actively involved in this, in this, in this Bible study. It is true, if I ask to read the scripture, I might not see you reading it. But read it, read it, and be active. Be active and concentrate. Don't allow anything to distract you from this evening Bible study. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So let's start with the memory verse for this lecture term, which is meekness. The memory verse is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 11 and verse 29. Matthew eleven twenty-nine. 29. I want you to take your Bible and, and let's read together. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Bible says, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Can we read it again? The book of Matthew, chapter 11, and verse 29. Bible says, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, and I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Praise the Lord. This is, this is the, the, the word of Jesus Christ, saying that we should take is yoke upon us because why that is when we can learn that's what we can learn jesus christ said i am an example of meekness for i am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your soul let's quickly look at what this means well let's look at this jesus christ is saying i am an example i'm an example of meekness i am lowly in heart what does lowly in heart what does what does it mean Lowly in heart means someone that is meek. Someone that is meek, I, I, I'm not talking about gentility, because someone can be gentle and be terrible. Someone can be gentle during the day, but in the night is, some, is, is something else. Someone can be gentle on face, but when it comes to atrocities, the person is, is number one. So we're not talking about gentility here. We're talking about meekness. Gentility can be faked, can be faked. But meekness, if it, is, if it is meekness, it can't be fake. If it's not meekness, then it's not meekness. If it's not meekness, maybe it's gentility. Yes, Bible is talking about gentleness. But when you, but what you are talking about, when you, are, when you talk about when you talk about meekness, this comes from the heart. It comes from the heart. Yes, Bible wants you to be gentle too. The scripture wants you to be gentle as well. But gentility, it's it's something that um, that uh, that shows physically. But, but meekness comes right from the heart. It is the act that is, that is meek. You might, not, you might not be meek in the heart and be gentle. Though the Lord wants you to be meek and also gentle. But we're talking about gentility. It comes from, that's why the, the scripture says, Jesus Christ himself said, I am lowly, lowly, lowly in heart. That means this meekness I'm talking about has to do with the heart. It's not just a facade. It's just not a show off. It's just not a, just a not just a pretense. This is something that comes from the heart. So when we're talking about meekness, it's something that emanates from the heart, that comes from the heart. That is what the Bible is saying. That's what the scripture is saying. You know, because Jesus Christ is always referring to things that come from the heart. He says this is now that the, the Father is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And we're talking about spirit, you're talking about something that emanates from right deep, 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 deep inside there. So take your, my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly not, and you shall find. What yoke? 
take my yoke upon you. What yoke is that? Let me tell you to be to be meek is is work for you to do. The only thing, the, the, the only reason why it becomes easy is because it is the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, the fact that the Lord, the fact that the, the Jesus Christ came to the world and it looks as if it was so easy for him to die and to take our sins away, it looks so easy, but it was hard work. And that was why at the, at the nick of, of, of being arrested, Jesus Christ even said, if this cup can pass me, can pass over. He said, it can pass. That means if I can escape this. But he said, no, it is not my will, but your will. So it's, it's uh, Jesus Christ is saying, it's a yoke. Take my yoke upon you. What the yoke I took, what I persevere, what I endured to be meek, take it upon you too. Take it upon you too. Don't think meekness is just something that you can just buy in the market. It's something that is going to take you putting a yoke like Jesus Christ took upon himself, upon you as well, for you to be, to be meek. Do you think it is easy for, for them to, to beat you on the cheek like they beat Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ was still focused, was still focused to complete the, the work of salvation? It's not easy. Do you think it's easy for them to, for, for, for someone to bear putting a crown of thorn on someone's head? And the, the, the gushing of the blood as a result of the of the of the crown of tongue. Do you think it is easy for someone to, to not to say, Oh, I'm not doing it again, oh God? I think this is too much for me. Do you think it is it is so easy for someone to be beaten as Jesus Christ was beaten? And they still forge ahead to complete the work of salvation. Do you think it is easy for, for, for someone to be stripped naked and to see to forge ahead? Do you think it is easy for that heavy cross made of pure wood? Do you think it is easy for them after someone they are beaten and someone they continue to beat, they put that cross upon the person? Do you think it is easy for the person to say, I still have to finish this work? That is what meekness can do. Meekness can endure. Having put on, having put on that yoke, and, uh, you know, its meekness is able to let you forge ahead in spite of whatsoever that are militating against your, your personality, against who you are, against what you represent. You are still able to go ahead without being violent. And I pray for you that the grace of God will be upon you and upon myself. To be able to exhibit this meekness in the mighty name of Jesus. It comes from the heart. And Jesus Christ, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. So you want to, to, to look at that too. So the resultant effect of taking Jesus Christ's yoke upon you, learning from him, that means copying him, uh, uh, taking example of your way of life from Jesus Christ, okay, who is meek, and whose meekness is from the heart, the resultant effect of it, or the result of it, is that you find rest for your soul. That's, that's enough. That is enough for you to pray to God for that, that fruit of, of meekness. That fruit of the Spirit, meekness, is enough for you. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have rest for your soul. At the end of the day, you're going to have rest for your soul. At the end of the day, you're going to have rest for your soul. That's the resultant effect. A rest for your soul means you're going to get to where you are getting to. You're going to accomplish what you want to accomplish. You, the Spirit of God will continue to be in you. And then you're going to get to the kingdom of God. The meek will get to the kingdom of God. The meek will get to the kingdom of God. Not only that, you accomplish your purpose on earth with meekness. The end result of what whatsoever you lay your hands upon shall be positive, shall be success as a result of your meekness in Christ. I pray for you that that spirit of meekness will overshadow your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Now that is our memory, mem memory verse. I want you to read it and read it on your own later, prayerfully. And you see the struggle will explain the more for it to you. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. 
Learn meekness of me. Learn how I can bear things. How I can show meekness. I can, I can display weakness. Meekness can emanate from me, even in spite of all circumstances. Meekness can emanate from my heart, and you see what the result will be. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at our text for this, for this lecture. The, the text is taken from the book of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, and we are going to read verses 5 to 11. Philippians 6, Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Please take your Bible and let's read together. The book of Philippi, Philippians chapter 2, we're going to read verses 5 to 11. Bible says, let this mind be in you. This is a compliment. This is a compliment to the memory verse that says, learn of me. Learn of me. Learn meekness. Learn perseverance from me. Learn to be able to take up my yoke upon you. Learn of me. So this is a compliment. This is Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What a compliment. What a compliment to, to Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. What mind? Meek mind. Meek mind. The mind that is led by the Spirit of God, always and at all time, in all places, not just in certain places, not when they are in the, you are in the church or when you are in the midst of the brethren, when you are in your place of work, when you are in school, when you are outside the country, when you are in your country, when you are in, community, in your community, when you are not in your community. Let this mind be in you, which, which was also in Christ Jesus. Can you see that? Now let's see, let's see verse 4. Let's see verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. You see, these are, these are things that their meekness brings. Jesus Christ, just because of the work of salvation, he came and died for sinners, having known no sin, according to the scripture. That is what meekness can do. Meekness can go extra length to help others. Praise the Lord. Verse 6, who being in form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. What does this mean? It means God, Jesus Christ is God. That's why we say Jesus is Lord. You know, Jesus Christ is one of the God's head. He's one of the Trinity. There is one God. There is only one God. But this God operates in three offices. And that is the argument with some other religion and Christianity that they don't accept. They don't accept because they don't understand it. I'm sorry to say. There is only one God. But this God operates in three offices. He operates as God the Father. He operates as God the Son. And he operates as God the Holy Spirit. He's just like me now. This is Pastor Peter Yadin now. As a pastor. This is an office of a pastor now. Teaching this Bible study. At home, I am the same Pastor Peter. Who is a husband to my wife. Another office. The same Pastor Peter. So is it the same Pastor Peter? Also... Who is in the office of a father to my children? The same Pastor Peter. So there is a time I will, for the ease of accomplishing what I need to do, I, I will put on, I will, I will operate in the office of a father. I will also operate in the office of a pastor, of a, of a church, of a shepherd. I will also operate in an office of a father, the same person. So our God operates in three offices. Office of the Father, Office of the Son, and the Office of the Holy Spirit. And you, and you remember that there was a dispensation of the Father himself. When Father was relating with the Word himself. And there was a time he was operating through Jesus Christ. Now he's operating through the Holy Spirit. It's for the ease of spiritual administration of God. And I pray that the Lord will keep on giving us that understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. 
So, so the scripture says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, for example, let me use the example I've been using now. Okay, I'm a pastor. And I'm a father. Now, I can't come to church and say, because I'm a father I'm in my house, and uh, I must be enforcing some laws, maybe that I've been enforcing in my, in, my, in, my, in my home, and I want people to just accept me. You just must have accept me because I'm a father in my house. It doesn't work, it doesn't work like that. Meekness doesn't show that. Or because I'm a pastor, when I get to a place where they don't know me, I just have to, for them to know that I'm a pastor so that they can respect me. It doesn't show meekness. This is the same with Jesus Christ. Bible says, who being in the form of God, who is equal to God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. He has never competed. He has never, Jesus Christ has never competed in spite of his position as God's head. As God. He will, he will hit with unbelievers, he will hit with sinners. Not that he loves sinners. I mean, not that he loves sins, but he loves the sinners he wants them to change. He will hit with them. He will dwell in their houses. He related with, with the disciples who are mortal individuals. He, he, he operated God himself. Bible says, living heaven and dwelling with us. God himself, Jesus Christ. Being with the disciples, going in and out with them. The difference is clear, but Jesus Christ did never for, 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 for once try to maintain that. So oh, I am this. Jesus Christ was just with the disciple like a common person, like the disciple. In spite of who he was on this earth. In fact, they were dressing the same way, they were eating the same way, they were going to places the same way, they relate the same way. And that was why when he was to be arrested, they needed someone that would show who they wanted to arrest. Because Jesus Christ did not make himself high chair, he did not make himself high gallery, he did not make himself high altar, like we do these days. We want to know who we are. We want to be unique, we want to be different among others. For them to know we are the leader, we are the pastor, we are the general overseer. They just have to know who we are. We just have to be different from others. These are not signs of meekness. Biblically, what looking at Jesus Christ, looking at the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ ne never, he did not give himself any post. He did not call himself anything. He did not ask people to call him anything. I have seen people who are professor. If you call them Mister, you are in trouble. You can fail. You can fail you as a student. Someone is a doctor. Is a is a doctor of of of, of philosophy. You call them Mister, you are in trouble. Someone is a pastor, and you call the person brother, you are in trouble. I remember when we were young. And then when people start to say, can't you call me a brother something or sister something, you know, in where I came from is, is, a, is a way of respecting an elderly person when you say brother, some, somebody. I'm not talking about bro as a Christian brotherhood. I'm talking about brother in my own culture. When you call people brother, that means he, the, the, the person does not need to be your blood brother. But because the person is older than you, is a sign of respect for you to say brother and to say sister. So I remember when we were young, if anybody was claiming, or oh, can't you call me brother? Then you ask the person, do you call Jesus Christ brother? You only, when you want to, you say Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, your mate, your mate, that you call him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Is God your mate? You say, God, have you ever had brother God or brother Jesus? God does not need, Jesus Christ did not, does not need all this from us. We are the one, the, the ordinary mortar, ordinary, uh, uh, ordinary dust that we want to create that unnecessary attraction and respect and for ourselves. Instead of earning it, we want to demand it. Meekness. 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 Jesus Christ is an example of meekness. Bible says he did not see it that maybe someone is robbing him. 
he came to the was he was brought to the world he was there with like ordinary person he did it it, it that was not what well, it was nothing to him it was nothing to him it did not matter to him that he was treated that way that is sign of meekness i want you to check yourself too check your life too check your life are you so so irritable you feel oh, uh, i've been disrespected oh i've been i've been this, uh, i'm not supposed to be here this place is not for me you know there's no respect here i need to be i know i need to be to to be to be known don't you know who i am we have had a lot of that that is common in some places before you say i will show you who i am I think you don't know who I am. You are not going to sleep in your house tonight. <laughs> they wanted to show you who they are. Did Jesus Christ show anybody who he was? Even when the disciple wanted to defend, he said, you don't need to defend me. If I need to defend myself, it doesn't take me anything to, to invite the host of heaven to fly to my board. I don't need that. I don't need that. Because I am an example of meekness. Are you an example of Jesus' meekness? Are you able to put that yoke that Jesus Christ put upon himself upon you? Are you able to learn from him? Because he said, learn of me. Because I am meek and lowly in heart. And you will find the rest for your soul. Are you able to do that? Do you do that? Or you are the proud one? You want accolade. You want respect. They don't give you, you claim it. You feel you don't have it, you leave the church. You feel they don't give you, you leave that church. That church is not good because you are not respected. Respect is not demanded, it's him. In spite of the fact that Jesus Christ did not demand respect, he earned it. Heaven and earth appreciate the work of salvation. See, tomorrow, I pray for you. The Lord will pour upon you the spirit of meekness. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will learn from Jesus. Let's move on. Let's move on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Who being in the form of God, you see, in the form of God, that's who he is. Taught it not robbery to be equal with God. He does not struggle. He still he will still say, My Father in heaven. He will still say, My Father in heaven. You want to say, Whose Father is he referring to? When is God Himself? That's a sign of meekness. Do you, do, do, you, do you exhibit such kind of meekness? Do you do that? Do you do that? Or you want to prove that you are this, you are that, you are this, you are that. You are this, you are that. To the glory of God, I remember, I remember my, my uh, conversation or when I, with a, a a member of of, of 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 one of our branches some years back truly to the glory of god things that i said were going to be done will be done by me but each time i was speaking with the person i always say we are going to do this we will do this the church will do that we will. i one day the sister asked me sir pastor you always say and we are going to who are those we I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not giving myself a pass mark, but I'm only giving an example. They, 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 that caught my attention. This I said, we have, we have, each time I speak with you, you say, we, who are the we? Are you not going to be the one to do that? Well, to the glory of God, I knew I was, going to, I was the one to be doing all those things, truly. But I felt comfortable saying, okay, uh, we will do this. The church will do that. We, I love saying that, even though I will be the one to do it. It's the grace of God. It's, a, it's something I learned too. I'm not giving myself a college, but I learn it and I love it. You don't put yourself at the center. You want to put the people that if, if it's not you, there's no way they cannot go. You will be the one to decide it. You want people to know that it is you. You are that you are you're there. It, without you, they can't pass through. No, even if it's you that you're going to decide it if the spirit of god is in you those things do not really matter what matters is delivery 
what mattered to Jesus Christ when he came to the world was the delivery. Delivery was important. He wanted to get there. Because of the crown that he set ahead, he endured everything. He endured hardship, he endured persecution, he endured everything, maintain a lowly life, maintain a meek life. I pray that it's the same spirit, like the spiritual said, that is in Jesus Christ Jesus, will be in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Bible says, but made himself of no reputation. Hmm. Make himself of no reputation. Jesus Christ is a reputable person. When he came to the world, was a reputable person in human, in human form, but he did not make any reputation from himself. He didn't say, don't you know I am, I am God? I am only here in the office of, of, of the Son. I am God. <laughs> Even when he said it, he needed to just make, make expression of fact and with all humility, with all meekness. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. The fact that Jesus Christ was made in the likeness of men, God was made in, the, made in the likeness of men, or in itself is meekness. However, knowing who he was, he did not make any reputation for himself, and uh, he, he took up the form of a servant, and it was nothing to him. And he did not put it as if he was doing us uh, something. It's something that nobody could do. But Jesus Christ did not. Uh, it's something that nobody could do. But Jesus Christ did not present it as such. That is what meekness can do. When you are when you are in the position to help people, you don't even you don't even bank on it and capitalize on it and become a, and become Goliath on the way of people. Because that signature is, is, is yours, that will prosper someone's life, or that will give someone's job, that will let, allow someone to move forward. You start to monopolize that signature, or you start to give them guidelines what they need to do to, 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 for you to be able to give that signature. You stand on the way of people. You don't allow people to go. Simply before, because you want them to know that you are. You are the boss. You are the pastor. You are the general overseer. You are the dad in the house. They must know. You are the king of the country, of, this, of, the, of the city. They need to know. You are the minister. You are the prime minister. You are the commissioner. You are the governor. You just want them to know. In the family, you are the rich, richest one. You want them to know. They just have to know that you are. Jesus Christ did not do that. And that is a sign of meekness. Uh, if you are a Christian and you must have the same mind that is in Christ Jesus. Bible says, made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of servant and was made in the likeness of man. Jesus Christ, God was made in the likeness of man. And this was nothing to Jesus Christ. His career, which is assignment. Verse 8 says, and being found in version as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death on the cross. This is so powerful. Having been found in fashion of, as a man, he was fashioned as a man. He was never a man. He was God when he came to this world. But he was fashioned as a man. Still he humbled himself. He became obedient unto the... You know, so in the on this, in, on this are people who say, yeah, if not because, if not because, I know who I am. <laughs> I know who I am, if not because, if not because, if not because, I know who I am. Jesus Christ never said, ah, I'm God though, I'm God though, if not because uh, it's just the agreement of the Trinity that, that should come to this world as, as, as son, so that the work can be delivered. I know I, Jesus never said that. And that's what we say in order to score points or to direct attention of people towards us or for people to know our worth, who we are. That is no sign of meekness. Verse 9 says, We are for God as a highly exalted him and give him a name that is above every other name. That is the result. Remember that in, verse, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Jesus Christ said, Take your yoke upon me and learn of me because I am meek and I'm lowly and ye shall have rest for your soul. Now look at that on a compliment. 
Wherefore, because of the fact that Jesus Christ came to this world, exhibited who he is, who, because his meekness personified, the result of this was that God highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every other name. Verse 10 says, that at the name mentioned at the name of, of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is not Jesus Christ talking here. This is not Jesus Christ talking here. This is Brock Paul talking here in his letter. To the Philippians. Say, if you don't know Jesus Christ, we are talking about is God. He only took form of a man. Paul was saying that to the Philippians. That listen very well. He only took the form of a man. He came to this world as a man. He is God. And that's why he has been highly exalted. And the name has been given to him that the name of every name must bow. And every tongue must confess. Let's people let people tell others who you are don't tell them who you are let people say oh that's the pastor of the church oh i have to say is the pastor of the church and he and i i he's always cleaning the chairs always arranging the chair he's always wiping the, the surfaces i have seen him coming around and taking care of someone is saying how can pastor be doing it i have felt the same way there was a day I was, I was in the church and I was trying to clean chairs and arrange chairs and to try to wipe the altar and the, 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 the flesh came to me and said, hey, Pastor Peter, why is it you that you are doing all this? So this is your church member and it's now for them. They can't, even do it, they can't even do all this and you are the one doing this in the morning. And uh, God really loved me and helped me. Immediately, the Spirit of God came and said, <laughs> so you have done so much. So you want to stop this because it is, it, it, it is meant for the members. Do you know what you are doing for me that is handing you all this grace you are receiving? I had it. And I said immediately, God, I am sorry. I am sorry. Each time as I have opportunity, I'll be doing it. I will not even be mindful whether members are doing what they're supposed to do or what they are not doing. If I have opportunity, I'll be doing it. I said, God, I recommit, I recommit myself to it. Bible says, Jesus Christ, take up the form of a servant. So how much more we? What can we be? Be anything. It doesn't really matter. Jesus Christ, who is our archbishop, Act of the hack at that bishop. That's an understatement to call him a bishop because people in the world call themselves a bishop. Be anything. Doesn't really matter. Because you are just mortal. What shows meekness are all these things. It's, it's in, it, 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 when you are relating with people as you, as you carry on with your life, people see you and see whether you have that meekness. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let's look at some, at some of the scriptures. Let's look at some of the scriptures for this uh, lecture 10 meekness. So we're going to open our Bibles to uh, the popular Galatians chapter 5. Please take your Bible. Galatians 5. And I'm going to read verses 22 to 26. We have read this in the past as well, but let's read it again. Galatians 5.22, and Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, the one we are treating meekness, temperance, and against such, there's no law. That means if you have all this nine, <laughs> if you have all this nine, there's nothing against you again. That's what the scripture is saying. No any other demand again that you, nothing again that you need to uh, uh, meet up with. You have, you have, you have love, 
<laughs> which is the which is the, the commandment of Jesus Christ. Loving God and loving, loving your neighbor. You have love, joy, you're full with of, of full of joy of God. You have peace of God. Lost suffering is there for you. Gentleness is there for you. Good, you are good. Goodness is there for you. You have faith. You have faith. No Bible says in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6. He said, and without faith, it is impossible to, to please God. Because those that come to him must know that he is and is a reward of the, a reward of those who diligently seek him. You have faith, you have meekness, you have temperance. Uh, then you have it all. And that's why the Bible says, against such, there's no law. There's nothing that is going to tell you that you are wrong when you have all this. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And verse 24 says, And they that are, that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. You see, those that are with Christ, flesh is crucified in their life. Lust is crucified in their life. Pride is crucified in their life. High-mindedness is crucified in their life. Show off is crucified in their life. This is me is crucified in their life. I am the one is crucified. Hi, hi, is crucified in their life. And Bible says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. These are the work of the spirit of God. These are the fruit of the spirit of God. You are a child of God. You claim to be a child of God. Then let's see it. Let's see your meekness. Let's see how you handle things. Let's see how you relate with others. Let's see who you are in your place of work. Let's see who you are in church. Let's see who you are in, your, in, in, the, in, the, in your family. Let's see who you are in the community. That is why we know whether genuinely you are a Christian and you, you have the meekness of God. They call the, the, the disciple Christian in Antioch. Having watched them closely, having observed them closely, and they, and they said they, are, they were like Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Let's see what the book of Numbers says. Number chapter 2, number two chapter 2, verse 3. Number 12, 3. Number 12, 3. Number 12, 3. Praise the Lord. Bible says, verse 3 says, Now, the man Moses was very meek. Now, the man Moses was very weak. I want you to put your name there. Okay, you are laughing already because you know you are not. Put your name there and say, Now, the man Peter is very meek. If it is true, put your name there. Now, this the the woman Rebecca. Now the woman Mary. Now the woman Cecilia. Now the the the, the woman uh uh Amechi or Emeka or Amaka or the brother Amechi. Is meek. Is if it is true, put your name there. If it's not true, don't bother put your name there, because you know it is not true. You are high-minded. You are proud, and you are self-centered. Because a meek person will never be self-centered. So Bible says, now the man Moses was very meek. Above all the men which were upon the face of the heart. Meekness is very vital in the life of a child of God. Because that Jesus Christ is an example of meekness. And he wants us to learn that meekness from him. Praise the Lord. Let's see what the book of Matthew says. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Matthew 5, 5. Matthew 5 and verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, 
for they shall inherit the heart. You see that? They shall inherit the heart. Someone is saying, oh, why are they going to inherit the heart? Is it not better to inherit the heaven? That means your meekness will give you success on this earth. That's what the Bible is saying. It will give you success, fulfillment. Why are you here? If you know there's nothing on this earth, why are you here then? then you don't need to be here if there's nothing on, in this earth. If there's nothing in this earth for you to achieve, God will not bother sending you here. You better to stay in heaven like uh, uh, my senior pastor is always saying. Pastor Ayolua, like I would say, if they, you don't have a purpose on heart, there's no point being here. You need to be in heaven because it's better in heaven. But for you to be here, that means there's a purpose for you. There is a purpose for you. There is a need for you on this earth to achieve. And Bible is saying that with your meekness, with your meekness, you will achieve that purpose and you fulfill that purpose. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the heart. Inherit means it doesn't mean that you are going to live here forever. It means that for that time you are here, you're going to be fulfilled. Bible says in, in, in Genesis after creation, it says subdue it. Subdue it. Subdue or subdue this earth. That means inherit it. And the Lord Almighty will give this earth into your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's see what the book of Colossians says. We are reading the scriptures. Uh, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3, and we're going to read verses 12 to 13. 12 to 13. Bible says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do, you, do ye. You see, something about forgiveness that I've realized is now is that some people have turned themselves to, to boiled egg or even egg. You see, there's no amount of water you pour on the egg. The water cannot enter into that egg. Some people, when the pastor is talking about forgiveness, they will just turn their face. They will switch off their brain. They will switch up their ears. They don't want to hear because there are people, they have, they have made up their mind never to forgive, never to speak to again, never to talk with again, never to relate again. So when any pastor is talking about forgiveness, they switch their brain off. They switch their ears off. They switch their reasoning off. And look at what the scripture is saying. Forgiving is a sign of humility, a sign of meekness when you forgive. And that's what Jesus Christ represents. That's why Jesus Christ can forgive any kind of sin. That's why Jesus Christ is there when you ask for forgiveness. Bible says, my children do not sin. And if you sin, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, who can plead our cause. Scripture says it. But we, that are children of God, that are looking for the forgiveness of God, we made up your upper mind not to forgive other people. So is the, is the same mind like the scripture says in Christ? Is it in you? It's, of course, it's not in you. If you are not forgive, if you cannot forgive, there is a strange spirit in you. There is not the spirit of God, though. There is another spirit that is different from God that is in you. Because Bible says, let the same mind be in you that is in Christ. Christ Jesus. So, and the mind that is in Christ Jesus is the mind of forgiveness. Mind of forgiveness. Put the Bible says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. What is bowels? Bowels means your, your tummy inside you. Let your, your the whole of thing inside you. Let it be full of mercy. Let your heart be full of mercy. Overlook things, forgive things, forgive people, let go. Bower of mercy. Don't switch your brain when they are talking about forgiveness. When pastor or any man of God is talking about forgiveness, don't switch your brain off. Don't switch your heart for. Don't close your eyes. Some people even walk out of, 
of the of the church when pastor is talking about the need to forgive they have become salmon proof like dr dk lukoya will say they have become egg that water cannot enter into because you're pouring water on egg it won't enter into it unless you break it so some people really need to be broken for the for word of god to enter into their heart and i pray that the word of god this evening will break you in the mighty name of jesus and Bible says, for bearing one another and forgiving one another, for bearing one another. We are not the same. We are from different backgrounds, different family, different countries, different ethnicity, different belief. So you don't expect people to, to, be, to, to, to believe what you believe in terms of relationship. You can't ask people to reason the way you reason. Reasoning can be different. And what people don't know is that you might be looking at the same thing in, from different view. From different view. For example, if you put a cup down now and someone is looking at the cup from my side, you will be seeing the handle of the cup. And someone is looking for the other hand, he will be telling you this cup has no handle. You see? And you start argument. But if you can say, okay, from my own end here, he has handle. Maybe... I wouldn't know what you are seeing from that side, but from my side, he has no handle. And by the time, but he has handle. But by the time you now throw of you with meekness, I say, oh, I think it's because you are looking at it from that angle. That's why a lot of people argue on things. They argue and they, they can end up becoming enemy because they're arguing. Why? Because you are looking at it from another angle. The other person, the other person is looking at it from another angle. So you can't see what the other person is seeing. The other person can't see what you're seeing and you believe that you are the right you are the, the 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 right person no it might not be like that so but we, with humility and with meekness two of you can understand why that misunderstanding is there and you can say oh it's because i'm looking at it from this angle and you are looking at it from that angle praise the lord bible says in, in verse in verse 14 and above all things and above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. Put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. Praise the Lord. Let's also see what Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4. I pray that this evening the Lord Almighty will minister to you in the name of Jesus. Let's see the book of Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 1 to 3. And Bible says, I therefore, I therefore, this is Paul again. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you, you walk worthy, worthy of vocation, wherewith ye are called. I, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, that ye walk worthy of vacation wherewith ye are called. That means you are being called as a Christian. You are called Christian. Then exhibit where the way of life that correlates with that Christianity. That correlates with that Christianity. That is what you should, you should exhibit. Because that is what I've called you, called you to be. Don't look different. They say, oh, are you sure this person is a Christian? Are you sure this person is a pastor? Are you sure this person is a choir leader? Are you sure this person is a Bible study teacher? Are you sure that this person is a Sunday school teacher? Are you sure that this person is a, is a leader of a group in the church? Are you sure this person is a general overseer? Are you sure that this person is a founder? You see, because you're, you, you, are not, you are not presenting what is worthy of that, that vocation. You are not presenting what is worthy of that vocation. That's why people start to query as people start to look at you, who you are. Paul says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation we are with, ye are called. You are a child of God, born again. Let us see that you are. Exhibit a life that is worthy 
of what you are called that is in consonance that to 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 who you call yourself don't let it be the opposite and people start to say yeah, we can't see anything that had up to to call this person someone that is born again praise the lord praise the living jesus praise the living jesus verse 2 says with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering for bearing one another for bearing one another this is paul in his letter to the ephesians verse 3 and and endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace some don't care even in the church of god if the church will scatter let the church scatter bible says paul says endeavoring that means make sure it is important to you to keep the unity of the spirit in bond of peace we have people that have scattered church we have people that live that left a particular branch of a church and because they are living they ensure that the the, the church did not exist again these are people that are supposed to be they're supposed to be endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of god they are the ones scattering the church of god so where is the where is the meekness we are talking about Paul said, in the bond of peace, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Let peace reign wherever you are. Even when we have people, some that do not love peace or allow peace to permeate, you be an enforcer, a broker of peace wherever you are. Don't join them to, to cause commotion in place of work, in your school, with your business associate in the church of God in your community don't be the ringleader of confusion disturbance public unrest don't be Bro, Paul said endeavoring to keep the unity of faith in bond of peace and the Lord will let all this ex be exhibited in your life in the mighty name of Jesus it will be exhibited in your life in the mighty name of jesus praise the lord let's see all the verse of, of other bible re, uh, scripture that we're going to read uh the book titus the book of titus the book of titus chapter 3 titus chapter 3 and we're going to read verses 2 to 5 titus 3 3, 2 to 5. Bible says to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all people, all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice, and envy, hateful, and hating one another. Praise the Lord. Verse 4 says, But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior towards man appeared, you see, not by work of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You know, I was saying it at the beginning that this meekness we are talking about is regeneration, reconfiguring of who you are. That is the meekness. And this is what Paul is saying here. Not by the work of righteousness which we have done, but according to his, to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So if you have met the Lord and you you claim to have the Spirit of God in you. We must see the fruit of the Spirit, meekness in your life. Praise the Lord. Let's see what the book of Peter, uh, First Peter says. We are reading a lot of scripture here. That is the way it is in our manual. First Peter, First Peter, uh, chapter two. First Peter two, and we're going to read verses twenty-one to twenty-four. First Peter 2. 
22 to 24. 1 Peter 2. One second, please. Let me open mine too. Okay, Bible says, For even here unto were ye called, and because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his step. Who did, who did no sin, neither was guilt found in his mouth. Who, when he was revived, revived not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Righteously, verse 24. Who is own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto, right, unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. This also complement what we have been explaining about Jesus Christ, who is an example of our meekness. Bible says he did not sin, no guilt found in his mouth. When he was revived, he did not revive back. May those of us that find it difficult to forgive, and I always want to, to take a revenge. May this word, may this word, may this word from Peter, may it, may it have meaning to us this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, he says, who when he was revived, revived not back. When he was suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged the righteous. You commit people that are meek, they commit things into God's hand. They let God take care of vengeance because he said, Vengeance is mine. They don't fight for themselves, they let God fight for, for them. Those that are meek. And I pray that the listen spirit, mind in Christ Jesus, will be now in us. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So if you want to read more, read Romans chapter 12 verses 14 to 16. If you want to read more? Romans chapter 12 verses 14 to 16. Second Timothy chapter 2 verses 24 to 26. Second Timothy chapter 2 verses 24 to 26. Psalm 37 verses 10 to 11. Psalm 37, verses 10 to 11. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. So read all those because of our time. Take that, read that on your own and pray that the Holy Spirit should give you more understanding. Now let's read the introduction. Bible says, under the new covenant, God himself indwells the believer through the Holy Spirit at new birth. This result in a ninefold manifestation of the fruit of the spirit of the born again or the transformed ones. By divine design, the Christian life is a daily choice to follow and, and uh, commit to the Holy Spirit or daily surrender to pleasing the whole sinful self. As a believer, as a believer yields daily to, the, to, to God and obey his word, the life of the Holy Spirit within him causes him to grow continually and attain maturity and fruitfulness in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Together, this ninefold moral portrait of Christ enables a consecrated believer to relate peacefully and fruitfully 
first with himself, then with his neighbor, and consequently with his maker. Of all these virtues that are highly rated by Jesus Christ as vital for life, meekness is one of the very first essential of godliness that a Christian should maintain. It is the lack of meekness in our present world that make people think that success comes only from aggression, competition, and materialism. This sad disposition is responsible for the unbeliever's self-destruction through brashness and self-promotion. Truly speaking, there can be no true transformation, growth, fruitfulness, and fulfillment in the life of anyone without genuine meekness. This is why we must take heed to really understand and strive to possess meekness. I just read from our manual, and this is exactly what we have been explaining. That is what we have been explaining. For you to excel as a Christian, you need to exhibit meekness. Praise the Lord. Uh, because of our time, let's quickly run through what is meekness. We have read Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 26, where all these fruit of the Spirit are itemized. So now I want to read what meekness stands for. One, it is emptying yourself so that God can fill you up with himself. That's a beautiful one. Emptying yourself so that God can fill you with himself. So when you give God chance, he occupies your life. If you don't give him chance, he stays away. Bible says, draw near to him so that I can draw near to you. And if you go far, then it's going to be far from you. Number two, it is an attitude of let go and let God. Let go, go, let go and let God. Like we have been saying, that is meekness. You let it go and you let God take absolute control. You let it go, you let God come into it. Some people will never let God to come into their life. I mean, to their situation of fears, they are, they are capable. Some, some children of God are capable to handle their case. They don't need God's assistance. They don't want to bother God. They can deal with people. They can fight their battle. God should go and say that. No, with meekness, you let go and let God come into it to do it for you. Three, it is letting God be God in your life. Let God be God. Don't take position of God. Let God be God in your life. Four, it is stepping forward gratefully to place on the altar the talent, time, and self at disposal of God and his children. That means meekness is that you step forward gratefully and you put on the altar of God your talent, your time, yourself. That means you commit, you give everything to God. God, that means God, use me. Use me. This is my talent. This is my time. This is everything. Oh, Lord, my Father, use me. That is meekness, just like Jesus Christ. Five, it is, it is a humble and kind attitude that expresses itself in, in the in the patient endurance of offenses and injuries within, without entertaining spirit of revenge and resentment. You know, we have said all this. It is when, when you have humble attitude, in, 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 in humble attitude to express, that, that express, expresses itself in patience. In patience. It's, a, it's, it's humble attitude that expresses itself in your patience. Okay, and in the face of offenses, injuries without entertaining a spirit of revenge and resentment. Some people will not take re the, the, the revenge, but they are so resentful. So resentful. So resentful. Number six, it is giving no place to rot and handing your cause over to God. You don't give, give place to rot. Rot is the highest level of, of, of anger. Highest level of anger. 
rot where you can destroy things you don't care you don't care you don't care even if the person dies you don't care when anything happens because you have gone to the level of of allowing rot in your life that's not a sign of being being meek being meek it is it is it is giving no place to rot or or i mean and handling your cause over to you hand your cause over to god and don't give place for rot seven it is being less concerned over being taken for granted like jesus christ all this we have explained you are not concerned if you are taking for granted. You don't say, you don't know who I am. I'm going to show you who I am. And make sure you don't sleep in your house tonight. You will sleep in the cell. As if you are the, you are the police. You are also the judge. Anyway, we have countries where, where an individual can be the police. And can also be the judge. Can jail someone. But thank God, in, in, in the countries where there is democracy, where people's rights and individual rights and privileges are not are not taken away from them you can't do that you can't do that and if you are able to successfully do that wherever the any part of the world where you have done that where well, that shows who you are because by your fruit we shall know you that means you are only a christian by mouth you're only a christian by attending church you're only a christian by membership by registration alone, by identifying with, with a church. That's what you have. You are nothing but just an identity that, 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 that is not recognized in heaven. Praise the Lord. It is a divine restraining grace that God gives to the believer. That's meekness. Divine restraining grace. You are able to keep your mouth. You are able to, to be peaceful under pressure you are you are able to still maintain your meekness even when you are being embarrassed now it is not weakness take note of that it is not weakness but meekness it is not weakness but meekness do you know that those that are meek are very are very very strong there is strength in meekness there is strength in meekness. The Lord looked at Moses and looked at his meekness. And that was why God found him to be capable to be able to lead the children of God. Now listen, look at that. The Lord looked at his meekness. It was meekness that the Lord saw in Moses that made him to be qualified to lead the great people of Israel. Remember when king was to be chosen also for Israelite and um, for yeah and uh, and uh, they they has the um, uh, they, they 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 has um uh, what's his name to bring out his children and he first he first offered holy up he first offered holy up because holy up was so handsome so he has he has most his muscle built and he had the physical quality of a leader he has physical quality of a leader only have has physical quality of a leader but the prophet said no this is not the king because the lord does not look at appearance <laughs> he look at inside so david was 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 seen as someone that had that humility and let me tell you, we have the evidence of it. Remember that when, when, when David was in trouble and the Saul wanted to kill him, that, that meekness came to play. It was displayed by, by David. Instead of David to kill, I mean, to kill Saul, he did not kill Saul, his enemy. Meekness. You see that? That's an evidence. So we can infer. That, that is one of those things that God look in, look at in the life of David that, he, that God made him qualify rather than his brothers. And even the first one. Please take note of that. Because later we saw it. That he was to kill Saul. Because God said, how can I lay my hands on the anointed of God? You see, people that are meek, 
they 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 put the word of god in high esteem they honor the word of god they honor the, the procedure of god just like david and the lord will help us too in the mighty name of jesus number 10 which is the last one here which are not the least it is a see through me see jesus quality in every aspect of your daily activities that when you when you see when you see through me you will see jesus that is that is that is weakness when you look through me you will see jesus can we look through you and see jesus or when we look through you it is the devil we will see because we will see vengeance we we'll see vengeance, we we'll see aggression, we we'll see lack of settlement, we we'll see lack of peace, we we'll see fight, we we'll see unforgiveness, we we'll see lying, we we'll see promiscuity, we we'll see being dubious, we we'll see backbiting, we we'll see different things. We we'll see tearing people apart with your mouth. That's what we we'll see. We we'll see tearing church apart, tearing family apart, causing trouble in, in, in workplace causing trouble in the community. That is what we see. See violent individual. See proud individual. That's what we see. So we can't see Jesus through you. But if you can see Jesus through you, that means that's an evidence of meekness in your life. I pray for you that the Lord Almighty will shower upon you his spirit in the name of Jesus. This is where we're going to stop tonight. And next week, by God's grace, we're going to conclude this particular lecture, lecture 10 about meekness. I want you to make it another date with God next, next week, Monday. And let's round it up. For eventually, this is your time for the spirit of that meekness to baptize you. And I pray that he will baptize you in the mighty name of Jesus. It will baptize you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to pray and say, Oh God, my Father, let your spirit that is in you, let it be in me. Because Bible says, let the same mind that is in Christ Jesus be in you. Say, oh God, let your spirit, let your mind, let it be in me. Start to pray, start to pray, start to pray. Oh Lord, let your spirit, let your mind be in me. The same mind in you, the same spirit in you, let it be in me. Spirit of humility, spirit of meekness. Spirit, 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 the mind that will have all this nine fruit of the spirit. Let it be in me. Let it be in me. Bible says there's no any law that against this. Oh Lord, let the same mind in you, Jesus. Let the same mind, the same spirit in you, Jesus. Let it be in me. In the name of Jesus. So if someone print that prayer, pray very well. Let you the same mind that is in you, Lord, let it be in me. Let the same mind that is you, let it be in me. Let the same mind, let the same spirit that is in you, Lord Jesus, let it be in me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to ask God to forgive you. When, if, whether you have been exhibiting pride, unforgiveness, ask God to forgive you. To have mercy upon you. Tell him you, now, from now by his grace, you are changing by you are retracing your step now, as from this moment, as from this moment, you let go. Don't forget that it is let go. Say, God, I will let it go. I, 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 by, your, by your grace, I am forgiving. I am leaving it. I am letting you to step in. Enough of me handling it myself. As from tonight, oh Lord, please come in and handle it. I put it at your feet. I put it at your feet. Someone pray that prayer. I put it at your feet, O oh Lord, because I want to exhibit your meekness. I want to exhibit your meekness. I let it go. O oh Lord, I let you go and I let and I let you step in. O oh Lord, I let it go and I let you step in. I let it go and I let you step in. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for the entrance of your word. I give knowledge and I give understanding. Thank you for making it possible for us to learn. Thank you for giving us your word freely. Oh, Lord, Father, we pray. Help us because we can't do this with on our own, but by your help. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. The Bible says, we talk with, with, with God, all things are possible. Lord, we pray. Oh, Lord, fill us with your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, fill us with your nine fruit of the Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, let our life continue to exhibit your meekness. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the same Spirit, the same mind that is in you, let it be in us. Lay your hand upon us and release that anointing. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Uh, you see the, uh, the account number for your tithe, for your offering, for your special pledges. You see it running across the screen. Uh, give unto the Lord. Bible says, give it to come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and running over. And so will it be in the mighty name of Jesus. That the Lord will bless you and you will live in abundance as you give to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't forget all our services. Ranging from Sunday service that starts at 9 o'clock at MFM at Mountain. And in all our branches all over, check their website in order to know uh, when uh, our other branches, when they start their Sunday service. And uh, go and attend a, a very close by a Mountain of Fire Miracle Ministry branch and see what, what the Lord uh, is doing. And don't forget the 70 days fasting and prayer started uh, today started today and is another power refilling experience which you must not miss and uh, all the blessing that father and the lord has pronounced upon us and what the lord has prepared to do through that 70 days first our prayer it will come upon you will come upon me come upon our families in the mighty name of jesus so all our program from the headquarters like um the revival hour the higo hour the manor water the mid um, month uh, programs, all of them, please put them in mind. Don't forget they control your day, control your night, all the program and the program for this for this month, uh, the deliverance and everything. Make sure you put them in mind. And all these are the Lord has designed them to bless your life and to increase your spirituality. And the Lord Almighty will continue to lay his hand upon you in the name of Jesus. So I'll see you next next Monday by God's grace. We are when we'll be completing this particular lecture 10 meekness i'll see you there in the name of jesus can we share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall join the house of the lord forever and ever amen three thunderous hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? God of Elijah, your name is your God. Your name is God. God of Elijah, you are the mighty, mighty man, of man of war. God of Elijah. Elijah, you are the real God. You are God, there is no doubt about that. You are big and strong, you are the mighty God. Mighty man of war that has never lose any battle. You are the woman I me, consuming fire. Mysterious and powerful God, you are the real God. God of Elijah, God of Elijah, your name is God. God of Elijah, you are the mighty man You are the of war. mighty man of God war. Of Elijah, you answer by fire. You answer by God fire. Of Elijah, you are the, the real God. God. You are God that fights and answers by fire. You are fearless, you are the rock, you are the God of all flesh. You are the divine supplier, divine provider. Among other gods, your power is different. Miraculous and wonderful, you are the real God. God of Elijah, your name is your God. Name is God. God of Elijah, you, you are, are the Alpha and Omega. Elijah, you are the God of Elijah that sets us by fire. God of Elijah, you, you are, are the real God. God. Where is the Lord God of Elijah?
Elijah Has a consume fire that no enemy can stand God of Elijah come and answer your name You have done it before you will do it again and again God of Elijah God of Elijah come and answer your name As the God that put enemies to shame God of Elijah God of Elijah come and answer your name Aside you, there is no other God that can say and come to pass. God of Elijah, come and answer your name in my life. Answer by fire. God of Elijah, come and answer your name in my life. As a divine provider, answer your name in my life. God of Elijah, come and answer your name in my life. You are the God of Olukoya, answer your name in my life. the strong man in my life God of Elijah come and answer your name big life. God you are prove yourself in my life eh? God of Elijah come and answer your name come and answer your name in my life God of Elijah God of Elijah come and answer your name in my 